In this episode of Restore It, I'm going to restore this Moulinette food mincer from the 1960s. This mincer was gifted to me by a fan of the channel who tells me they had it in their family for decades. They told me it can be used for mincing vegetables, fruit, fish and other meats. I did a little bit of research when I first got it, but I couldn't find much online about them, apart from the fact that it's apparently self-sharpening. And like any good kitchen gadget, it folds down to a smaller size for storage and comes apart easily to make it easy to clean. Once it's restored, we'll get some vegetables and give it a proper test. But before I do that, I of course need to take it apart and restore every single piece. I'm using hot water to soften the rubber as it's gone quite hard over the years. Before we get into the actual restoration, a lot of my viewers have commented in the past thanking me for making these videos without music and that because of the natural feel of the content, they can live vicariously through my videos and satisfy that need some of us have to take things apart, see how they work and restore them. Which is a really nice thing to hear and also brings me right onto the sponsor of this episode, Fishing Clash. Another great way of living vicariously, only this time as a world travelling fisherman. Fishing Clash is a mobile game all about fishing and it's totally free to download on Android and iOS. So before I go any further, if you love fishing but can't always go when you'd like to, click the link and download it now as this isn't a bad substitute at all. You get to travel around the world fishing from either your boat or on the shore of one of the many famous fishing locations like the Amazon River or the Great Barrier Reef. If you don't fancy dealing with all of the preparations needed for real fishing, well, your favourite hobby is now available in your pocket. And just like in real life, you can upgrade your rods and lures to compete with other fishers and catch the biggest fish. You can also upgrade your skills for more advanced fishing styles and compete in weekly competitions and events to even further develop your skills and unlock better gear. And if you really want to take it up a level, you can create a clan, play with your friends and family, and compete with other players. So to get Fishing Clash today, use my code RESTORE IT and get a special reward. With my gift code, you'll get a 3 star rod, 1 mythical lure, 50 luck power ups, and 30 weight power ups, all worth $20 to help you catch bigger fish. To redeem your code, follow these 3 steps and you'll be a fishing pro in no time. So download the game today to support the channel and get your fish on. Big thanks to Fishing Clash for sponsoring this episode, let's get stuck into this mincer. It was only when I was manhandling the thing to get the feet off that I realised I hadn't locked the legs out properly and that there was indeed a system in place that I missed. Because both the legs and the main body are rusty, it feels like I'm going to break it when I try and lock them into the out position. With all three legs locked out, it actually feels a lot more ergonomic and stable. Now, I can remove them by squeezing them together and freeing them from the brackets. The only way to remove this locking mechanism is to grind down these little bumps made by some sort of press or punch during the manufacturing process. The round handle won't budge at all, so I've decided to split it into two and free it that way as it's going to be replaced anyway.
The last job of the disassembly is to remove the wooden handle from the larger leg. And there we have it, everything separated and ready to be restored. And these are the bits that need to be shot blasted, almost all of it, so let's get to it. With the rust gone, I can now start to add shine back to the metal using the bench grinder and the large wire wheel. For the bits I couldn't reach, I'm using different steel wire bits on a rotary tool. It's already starting to look a lot more food safe. This is already quite shiny, but it can be definitely taken a step further with this Unipole metal polish. Like before, I'm using the rotary tool on the bits that I can't get to with the bench polisher. This piece was blackened using the quenching method, so I'm going to try and redo just that. I started off by doing this with the middle piece attached, and although it looks great on camera, in real life it was seriously dark in the middle and light towards the ends, because the middle bit was holding all of the heat. I'm going to take it off and redo the quenching without it.
I don't think I could really get it hot enough with this blowtorch, but I'm quite happy with the results. As this handle isn't getting replaced, just repainted, I'm going to remove most of the old paint and add some fresh coats. Whilst that dries, I'm going to clean and tidy up the feet and this little red piece. Which to be honest with you, I have no idea what purpose it serves. If you know, please let me know down in the comments. I'm cleaning them in 20 to 1 concentrated degreaser that I've left undiluted. With these looking much cleaner, I'm going to add some oil to rehydrate them even slightly and then clean up the feet with a blade. As for the wooden handle, I found a company that makes all of the sizes and bought one that matches the best. The only problem is that it has a hole going all the way through it. This is easily fixed with a bit of filler. Whilst that's drying, I can add the second coat to the long handle. I can now sand the filler down and paint this one also. There's been so much polishing during this episode, I had to spread it out a bit for my own sanity. So finally I can polish the main body inside and out, using the rotary tool and the small buffing wheels. With that done and the light beaming off it, I can give the round handle one more coat and we'll be ready to reassemble. And there we have it, everything restored, ready to be put back together again and tested. So without further ado, let's rebuild this thing, starting with the locking mechanism. Up next are the legs. Easy enough, I just need to install the long wooden handle in the main leg and the rubber feet need to be heated up again so I can squeeze them back into place. With those complete, I can now add them back onto the main body. As you can see, 
the legs no longer stay in place when I put them in the lock position. This is because I had to squeeze them together to get them out. So now I need to undo that force by using these pliers. With that done, I can now rebuild the cutting blade assembly. To mimic the punched metal, I'm welding a blob where it used to be to hold everything in place. Lastly, the new handle needs to be added onto the end of the blade assembly, making sure it spins on the sleeve freely. With everything back to how it was, I can now join the three pieces together to complete the restoration. And there we go, fully restored and ready to use for another 60 years. Believe it or not, without the rust, it's much much smoother. So let's give it that proper test I was talking about with the only vegetable I have on hand, a pepper. It actually works quite nicely, probably not as efficient as the new tech, but a lovely piece of functional history nonetheless. So that's all from me for this episode, thanks for making it this far, and once again thanks to Fishing Clash for sponsoring this episode, make sure you click that link in the video description and use code RESTORE IT to get those rewards. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.